Today on our 2005 Chrysler Town & Country, we're going to be taking a look at and installing the Timbrin Rear Suspension Enhancement System, part number TDVR05096. So this is what the Timbrin Suspension Enhancement looks like once it's installed on your vehicle. What this one will do, by replacing the factory bump stop, it actually holds tension. So as you load the vehicle, it will help support that and help prevent your vehicle from squatting as much as it would normally with just the factory bump stop in place. This does get stiffer the more weight is put on it, but you will also want to refer to your vehicle's owner's manual to see what the weight capacity is that your vehicle can handle, and you want to be sure not to exceed that, but these do feature a capacity of 2,000 pounds that they will help assist the suspension with. They're made of a very durable rubber design that features a bolt that just goes up through the center of it to bolt it into place. And your kit does come with four bolts, but you'll just need to go with whichever bolt and lock washer is the correct size for your application. One thing that sets these apart from other suspension enhancements on the market is that these, when there's no load on the vehicle, they're not going to change the ride quality at all. Whereas some of the others, such as airbags, you do have to maintain a minimum air pressure, so it will change the ride at least a little bit, whereas these will not. These do a really good job to improve the stability and handling of your vehicle, especially when you've got a load on it. So if that's what you need and you have a minivan like this one, this one's going to do a really good job of helping to give you better control and feel a little bit safer when you've got a van full of kids. All right, so first, before we get going on the install, let's take a measurement to see where the factory suspension sits without a load on it. And here at the top of the rear fender, sitting about 29 and a half inches. Let's move up to the front, and at the top part of the front fender there, sitting about 30 inches. And once we put a load on it, we'll be able to compare to see how much the factory suspension squats and is affected. Now, with a load of weight on the back of the vehicle, the rear suspension has dropped about an inch and a half. And going back up to the front, the front has come up about half an inch. As we take it through our road course, here we'll go over the alternating speed bumps. And as you can see, there's a lot of rear suspension articulation from side to side. And it takes a little while to recover. And then moving into our solid speed bumps, again, it comes down hard and it takes a little bit for the suspension to recover. And then going through our slalom, you see that going back and forth, we're definitely getting some body roll to where we can see a little bit of a weak spot in the suspension. Now that we've got our timber installed, let's take these measurements again to see where the fender sits. So now, we're right at about 29 inches, so instead of being an inch and a half down from where it was without weight, now we're only about a half of an inch down. And then checking the front again. Now it's raised only about a quarter of an inch as opposed to a half an inch. With the timber installed, going through our road course again, going over the alternating speed bumps, you can see that we don't have nearly as much suspension articulation. It recovers a lot quicker because it's not going quite as low because that helps to give us some resistance there. Going over our solid speed bumps, it's recovering quicker and we're not getting as much bounce to our ride. Going through the slalom, we're not getting nearly as much body roll as we were before and it feels much more solid. Now, let's go ahead and show you how to install it. Right here is where the Timbrin suspension enhancement is going to mount up. On both sides, the factory bump stops were rotted and had fallen off, so I'm going to have to remove these plates, and then once I've got this plate removed, I'll be able to bolt the new Timbrin up into place. Before I get started with removing this, I'm going to put a little bit of spray lubricant around the edges just to kind of help free it, and then once it starts moving, it's just got that little bit of extra lubrication to assist with movement. And that right there is the head of a stud that goes up into a, a weld nut in the frame. So on this one, it's pretty well rusted in there. So what I'm gonna do 
I'm taking a pry bar. You can also use a large flathead screwdriver or something that would work to grip in one of the little holes around the edges here. And I'm going to hit the end of it with a hammer to start knocking it loose. But before I start to do that, I do want to note that we've got brake lines that run near these on both sides, so you will want to be careful of those, not to put too much pressure on them and potentially break those. If you've got a big pair of channel locks, once you've got it started, you can grip the edges of it and start to rotate it around. Now if you'd like to give yourself a little bit more room and just feel a little bit better about working around this ABS wire here, you can pop it out from right there just using like a flathead screwdriver or a small pry bar, something like that. Just pry it out of there and that way, once you've got it out, you can just tuck it up out of your way there. Once you've got it backed out most of the way, you'll be able to start turning it by hand. Then you'll be able to take it out of there. Now, once you're all done, I definitely recommend putting a little bit of spray lubricant back up onto the threads in there so when you mount the timbering up into place, you shouldn't have too much problem with the threads. What we can do is we can take our timbering. So down inside there, we've got a flat washer, which we'll need to be sure to take our bolt and lock washer to meet up against that so that that bolt goes through the flat washer and then through the spacer that's on the very end of our timber and spring there. Once we've got that lined up through there, we want to take this plate that mounts on the top, we can just put it through there and we'll be able to put it up into place. And I'm using a 13 millimeter short socket and about a six inch extension in order to give myself room to start tightening up that bolt. So I'll get that bolt lined up with the threads there and start threading it into place. Once I've got the thread started there, I, I'll wanna make sure that this plate is situated so that this flat side right here is lined up over here with where this bracket for the brake line so that it doesn't overlap and cause that timber and jount spring to be cocked to the side a little bit. So now with everything set and lined up, I can take my 13 millimeter and begin to tighten that up. And I'm just gonna hold this plate in place just to make sure it doesn't shift on me. Once that stops, I'll turn it just a little bit more by hand. I just want to make sure that it's nice and tight. Don't need to over tighten it, but you do want to make sure it's nice and snug. And once it's secure, that side's done and you'll do the other side the exact same way. And that's going to complete our look at the Timbrin Rear Suspension Enhancement System, part number TDVR05096 on our 2005 Chrysler Town & Country.